thanks very much for coming. Um, we've just done a recent survey of expert witnesses, and a lot of them are saying that solicitors are putting pressure on them to perhaps change their view or perhaps enhance what they put in their report. Do you have any advice for experts in these circumstances? Yes. You're only worthwhile as an expert if it's genuinely your view. So the balance you've got to strike is making sure that anything that goes into a report or anything you say in cross-examination genuinely reflects your view. If the language that is being suggested to you jars with you, whether as a result of the form of the language or the substance of what it's saying, absolutely avoid it like the plague. So Be just say no? Just say no. I think the problem is some experts have said that solicitors put some covert pressure on them saying, well, you won't get further instructions or we might delay payment. So there's that sort of pressure rather than a direct change your opinion. Yeah. And I guess you're saying the same advice again. Yes, I'm saying absolutely you have to resist it because you're of no value to the court and therefore you're of no value to your client if there is any hint that pressure has meant you've either changed the way you've put your expert opinion or worse, changed your expert opinion. Experts are only as good as the truth of what they say. If there's any sense that it's a piece of evidence that is tutored by a fear of being paid late, a fear of not being instructed in the future, then it's worthless. And my experience in court over 40 years is that if it is the product of pressure in that way, if it gets to trial, that invariably comes out. Not it will be revealed. It will be revealed, not necessarily because people will find out about the pressure, but they will think, oh, this doesn't, doesn't quite, quite fit. It just jars. Yeah, yeah. 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 And what would you say you've been involved in the law some 40 years? What's, what's other advice would you give to experts, expert witnesses in terms of the relationship with solicitors and barristers? Um, always be clear about what the limits and the boundaries are. Of Make, your expertise. Of your expertise, yes. But, well, of your expertise, but also you won't be pushed. Sure. Uh, the other thing is the thing that really makes you an effective expert witness is a grasp of the detail and the facts of the case. So reading, preparing, making sure you know all the facts is what will trip you up both in the preparation with the solicitors and in court is if you give, it, if you give advice on one particular basis and then it becomes apparent that the basis of the facts is, is different or that you're doing it on the hoof. So know the facts. Hard work, sticking to your position, being authentic with the three things. Sure. Now, of course, since the case of Jones and Caney, we've got liability in contract and negligence. Yeah. For instance. We've got the uh, potential of going before disciplinary matters in the, the professional body. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got proportionality in terms of fees. Yeah. So some experts are saying, well, it's not worth getting out of bed. And I can't spend that amount of time looking at all the detail because it's not worth it for me. Well, first of all, I think Experts should not complain that people expect them to take reasonable care, sure. which is the consequence of the contract. Secondly, I don't think people think they should, that there's anything wrong with charging fairly. I think there has been a real problem about expert bodies, and we just had the case yesterday in which, it, it, which in effect the, the, the High Court has said, look, this expert body has not behaved rightly in in, in effect striking somebody off, disciplining them, because they gave their genuine opinion. It might be an opinion that the court disagreed with in a particular case, but fearing that you would actually be disciplined for giving your own view. And it was absolutely, clay, it was absolutely plain that the expert in that case did give her own view. It was an honest view, sure, albeit sure, a rude sure. That is a very bad place for uh, the, the, the professional bodies to have got to. And so that third one, namely a risk of being disciplined by your professional body, if a conclusion goes against you is a very inappropriate situation to be in. Sure, sure. Of course, if you've given a, a, a view that's not genuinely yours, then you should be vulnerable to professional misconduct. But if you've just given a view that's disagreed with you, you should not. No, no, and no. I was very concerned by that case. So I was glad to see that Mr Justice Mitting in effect set aside the findings. So I think there's going to have to be further hearings in relation to that. Well, I think she's been prevented from giving expert witness evidence for three years. Yeah. So I don't know whether she's going to appeal against that. Well, it's, I mean, presumably she's been a... Has she been a that, that was the conclusion. Yeah, yeah. So, right. so she's been reinstated on the, on the on list. The but, yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's really appreciated.